Hey everybody, happy Sunday. I hope that wherever you are and whatever you are doing, you are having an amazing weekend. Look, we have a new bee hotel. And look, forgive the, the stuff here, but we have a new bee hotel for the solitary bees and they are making use of it. I 3D printed this a day ago and already you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight holes that have been filled up. This is one from last year. You can see some bees waking up there. And then if I go over to the other one, you'll see that the bees are doing things there also. It is a wonderful time of year. Uh, look right here. All the bees are coming in and out of this one as well. Solitary bees are not naturally aggressive, so I'm not like in danger of being stung or anything, but it's just wonderful to see the bees coming in and doing their thing and things are growing and it's just ah there's so much to talk to you about today so much to show you let's start with the other massive thing look we finally have some cherry blossoms it's taken a while um, but our cherry blossoms are finally in bloom so these two cherries at the back here are ones that were here previously and then these this uh, cherry blossom right here, this is cherry blossom from our tree that I put in a couple of years ago and it's looking incredible. The apple trees have not really started blossoming yet, at least this one hasn't, but it's working on it. Looks like we're going to have some apple blossoms here very soon, which makes me super excited because there goes a bike. Uh, it makes me super excited because it really does mean that spring is finally here. So I have been busy planting. We've got some russet potatoes in here. Nothing in here right now. But then here I have some broccoli, some cauliflower and some sprouting block broccoli. It might be the way around. It might be broccoli, cauliflower, sprouting block broccoli, broccoli. I have not been drinking, I promise. Also, I want to show you my rhubarb. Not everyone likes rhubarb, but check this out. This is a pot of rhubarb that I've had. It has been growing um, for a couple of years and has never, repeat, never grown quite this well. So there's clearly something going on. I also was able to cut my grass for the first time this year over the weekend. You might notice if you are particularly observant that not all of the grass has been cut, but that's okay over here my parsnips are coming along nicely and these parsnips are coming along nicely yes i've got lots and lots of parsnips and then over here you will notice we have a new tub not a new tub it was donated by my sister-in-law she had it in her old house and then she moved somewhere where she couldn't keep it so they gave it to us and i have put loads of potatoes in there because you know I'm British, you know I like my potatoes. So uh, I will boil them, mash them and put them in a stew. I might even make chips with them. You never know. Um, this year I'm growing more potatoes than I've ever grown before. And I also have some seed potatoes, which is going to be an exciting new thing for me. I've never grown potatoes from seed before. I'm not talking about seed potatoes. I'm talking about seeds that you put in the ground much like you would put tomato seeds in the ground but they are potatoes it's bonkers it's really awesome though the chickens are behaving themselves uh i did try i did try reintegrating ashley the other day in the garden i had the other chickens out to let them kind of move around a bit and help me with the with the gardening and as soon as I, I got uh, Ashley out, they, they went for her. So I think Ashley is, is going to be a solitary chicken, at least for the foreseeable future, because dinosaurs are horrible. Uh, I now have a new, a new sticker for the back of my truck that says, I raise baby dinosaurs. And while it is cute, these guys really are horrible dinosaurs and they, they just treat each other so badly. I have left the door open to the chicken coop because one of the chickens has been running around who should not be running around and she is refusing to go to bed. It's kind
kind of fun to watch. The sun is not far, about an hour away from the sun setting and she still doesn't want to come in. Anyway, come into the greenhouse because I haven't shown you the greenhouse for a couple of weeks and um, I realised I kind of missed it last week because there wasn't a lot going on. There's more going on this week. As you can see, it's still very much in winter mode and I apparently have something on my arm that I don't even realise I remember putting there. Anyway, uh, probably from, from something in the garden. This is still very much in winter mode with the straw and all the other things. It's getting there. It will soon need to get into planting status. But under here, and this is here to prevent little critters from helping themselves, we have some seeds. So we've got some tomato seeds in here. Sadly, they have not um, started to grow yet. And I am worried that someone has helped themselves to those. But I do have some more seeds. I can grow more tomatoes if required. What I don't have many more seeds for are cucumbers. And look, this is progress. All of my cucumbers are germinating in some way or another, including this front row here. These guys are, are, are a British type of cucumber called Telegraph Improved. And I adore cucumbers. They are, I think, probably one of my favourite, favourite fruits. I really love cucumbers. I think they are awesome. And it's the one thing that Kate Walton Elliott and I disagree on. She hates them. She really hates them with a passion. I love cucumbers and think they're amazing. So it's, it's one of the few things that we disagree on. We agree on most of the things, but cucumbers, no. She thinks they're horrible and I think they're amazing. So there you go. Uh, fun fact though, cucumbers do have extra potassium in them as I understand it. And as someone with long QT, which is a potassium deficiency based heart condition, my heart doesn't process potassium properly. Uh, I think it's kind of cool that I like cucumbers and I crave cucumbers. Anyway, let's show you some more things in the garden. I have removed most of the straw mulch. Some of it's still there, but the garlic is coming on so incredibly strong right now. I'm super excited to see that. Over here, we have a volunteer broccoli. This, this bed has not been touched all winter. This broccoli has just decided to, to grow and is, and is going to go to seed. You know, I'm not going to complain because I think, hey, you, you survived the winter and you've done amazing things. That's great. What hasn't survived the winter is this a lovely, lovely rosemary bush that was given to me by my good friend, Bill. And I have a suspicion that it is dead. Maybe it will come back. It did have some green leaves on it just before the last of the winter storms, the one where I crashed my truck. And um, yeah, it's unfortunately uh, not looking good. By the way, my hand is now free of the um, of the the cast, not the cast, the the thing that it was in. I've forgotten the name of it. I'll remember it in a minute. Uh, the splint. Uh, it turns out that I've just really, really badly sprained my arm, my hand and my wrist in that accident. And I also have arthritis apparently. So yay go me. Collect them all. Over here, you will see that I have collected some lovely, fresh, new soil compost mix from a local place um, that are well known. I nearly gave their name. If I gave their name, you'd probably figure out where I live. And while I know some of you have figured it out, I do like to have some mystery. <laughs> anyway, super cheap, like 20, $30, I think it was, for a cubic yard, put it in the back of the trailer, brought it up with the, with the new truck. And uh, I spent about half a day uh, putting it in various places putting it in for the potatoes and then putting it in uh, over there in the compost in the corner. I'll probably go and get some more in a couple of weeks. The uh, broad beans or father beans are doing very well. We've got the mustard coming up. I think that's some lettuce coming up in here in the middle. You can't see it very clearly, but there is a row. I think that is my row of lettuce. If not, it might not be. It might be something else. There's also supposed to be some beet here, but we are a little concerned that the beet may have kind of lost, uh, lost, its, um, lost its life courtesy of birds, wild birds in the garden who do like to kind of swoop down and help themselves to beet because it's red. Beet is red. 
the, the shoots come out of a ground red. You'll see here that the carrots and the onions are still doing well. The onions on that side of the garden, on that side of the bed, are doing better than the onions here. They're different onions. What are you going to do? <laughs> so I just have to be patient and hope that everything comes out as it should. And there is a chicken who still wants to remain out. Come on, baby. This hen is the daughter of um, is the daughter of Charlie and Carolyn, our um, one of our older hens, and she's got this kind of very free spirit thing going on. And she just she just wants to do her own thing. <laughs> she just you can't go that way, baby. Come on, go back and then jump up. Go and be with your daddy. There you go. I had to shame her on camera and then she behaved herself impeccably. Anyway, that is everything that's going on in my garden. As you may or may not be able to see, there's rain coming, which is due tomorrow. So I'm filming this on Tuesday, but I hope that wherever you are and whatever you are doing, you enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I hope that if you are gardening, whether it is the end of the season for the Southern Hemisphere and you're enjoying the harvest. I know someone on Mastodon recently published all of the tomatoes that they're harvesting, some of which are green because it's the end of the season. Or you're in the Northern Hemisphere like me and you are just starting your gardening season. I hope that the rest of your day is an amazing one and I will be back as usual next week. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1,500 people that help make this channel possible by funding it through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team, and making sure we can be 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, $10.08 a year. A massive welcome to our newest supporters, Ralph Koenig, Mr. Eldritch, Dwayne Edegar, and Corey Singletray. To join our list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your week of fame. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll also find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have an old fashioned PO box you can reach us at the address is listed below. And of course, if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store link in the down below as well. This month, we are celebrating wrangling Evie Fudd with a fantastic t-shirt design by our in-house artist and animator, Erin. Get yours today by heading to our Redbubble store. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you're subscribed on Peertube or YouTube, and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we also think that this one is well worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving. <laughs>